anyone who has believed in Christ has overcome. That's what it says. But that ought to create a curiosity because if you will look at me at Revelation written by the Apostle John, in chapter 2, verse 7, we read, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes. In verse 11, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, he who overcomes. In chapter 3, verse 12, He who overcomes. So wait a minute. 1 John 5 says, you have overcome. But the same author, John, when he writes the book of Revelation, says, he who overcomes. So on one hand, I have overcome. On the other hand, I need to overcome. So how do I put this together and what does it mean? When John says you have overcome, he's dealing with your legal status. So that's why the word is you have overcome spiritually, legally, because you come to Christ, but you may not yet have overcome in terms of it working out in your life, in terms of you experiencing it. If you and I are going to be overcomers in practice, not in principle, you're going to have to see the Jesus that John saw. This is not Jesus meek and mild. This is not Jesus in a manger. No, no, no. This is Jesus on fire. He says like the burning of a furnace. He says when he spoke, it was like the rushing of many waters, like oceans and seas just thundering. And he says when I saw this Jesus, it knocked a brother off his feet. I, I fell down like a dead man walking. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 it says that when Jesus died he he disarmed the rulers of this present age I disarmed them so the reason why the devil can defeat us is because he can deceive us into thinking their bullets still in the gun but what Jesus did on the cross the scripture says is he disarmed them. He took away the authority. So now you're beaten by deception that feels like reality, looks like reality, seems like reality. That's why the scripture says in Romans 8, 37, you are more than conquerors. When you shift how you relate to Jesus, he shifts how he relates to you. Because now you're relating to him as he is, not as you want him to be. Because a lot of folk come to church worshiping a Jesus as they want him to be. Not as he declares himself to be. And isn't it terrible when somebody talking for you, trying to describe you to you when you know you? Let me say this as I get into this. God places victory in your reach, not in your hand. Big difference. Overcoming is in your reach. You can get it, but it's not in your hand. See, for many people, the cross is a historical event. 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on the cross, and I believe he died for my sins. I accept him as my savior, and because of that, I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. And all that's true. But these folk are overcoming him by the blood in the present, in the present of this, of this text. They're not, they're not just overcoming him because the blood worked 2,000 years ago. That's why when Paul described his identity in Galatians 2.20, he said, I am right now crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, it's Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He says, if you want to look at my life now, I am controlled by the cross. That is... I am controlled by the work that Jesus Christ did 2,000 years ago that affects my decision-making in the present. He says, secondly, they overcame him by the word of their testimony. You will not overcome whatever you're needing to overcome if you are a secret agent Christian. Forget overcoming because 
Jesus Christ with fire in his eyes is not trying to help folk to overcome who are embarrassed to be associated with him. He says, you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father, Matthew 10. You confess me before men, I will confess you before my father. God has placed everything in the hand of his son. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the father. So the Father is glorified when Jesus is the superstar. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was on his shoulders. By his stripes, you are healed and you can't identify with the risen Christ. That's why, that's why Paul says in Luke 9, he says, I die daily. Every day when I get up in the morning, I say, I am dead to me and I'm alive to you. If, if, I, if I stay here, it's to serve Christ. If I die, it's to go be with Christ. And if I suffer, he says, I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not be worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed unto me. So he's saying basically, I'm in a no-lose deal. Living, dying, so it's, it's all Christ. Once you have now identified with Christ, you have positioned yourself to be an overcomer. You have positioned yourself to see the move of God overrule 